<laughs> yeah, this is definitely the weirdest one yet. Dude, you sound like you want a sugar daddy. <laughs> Just watch some cows get like lasered into little pieces. Am I the cute one? Well, you're going to try and trap me and I'm about to... <laughs> Are you sure about that? The, I think we have to. The, the clip that got cut out. Uh, yeah. I don't even want to make eye contact with Annabelle. You, well, you definitely have to make eye contact when you <laughs> smash. <laughs> Full-blown video stay at Skinwalker Ranch. But you can just watch Corey get dragged away by a skinwalker. You think that something's attached to my dad's side of the family? He used to do, like, exorcisms. My mom's side has been known. I'm more of a legend, whatever, that they did witchcraft. Your great parents were kind of like Twilight, but it's like you have an exorcist and a witch. My dad, I think he's 53. The dream that we had was, like, last year, and I'll come back for your husband at 54. The light goes dim. My door's closed. She couldn't have gotten in and closed it herself. I was messed up by that. Well, you, you went up the stairway? Come on, dude. Come on, dude. Do some parkour, dude. I am not ripping my jeans. This is so, so funny to look at right now. Oh. Every other tour stop has been like in a spooky place where hundreds of people have died with like all of our Divic boxes. And now we have Barney, Donald Duck, uh -huh. the, the Ninja, Ninja Turtles, Turtles, and Big Bird. Big Bird. This is When I walked in here today, we were originally going to do it like further in a cafeteria in a dark room. And I saw that there was like 50 deaths. And I was like, no, we're changing the whole thing. <laughs> I'm glad we did. dude. <laughs> Look, it looks like we're teaching school. <laughs> I just love that we're in mid-orange correctional facility. Mm. A, a, a violent crime prison and we found the only room covered in Cookie Monster and Elmo <laughs> to do the live show from. Yeah, but Big, I don't know. Big Bird's always been kind of scary to me. So I think, I feel like it kind of fits. <laughs> Wait, hold on. They're, they have all their posters on the desk and it looks like they brought their homework. <laughs> it looks so, it just looks so funny. Everyone's all prim and proper with their elbows on. We should have given them all like a little notebook to take notes during the, oh, oh that, we should have a quiz at the end of the show. Ooh. Okay, so with that being said, we talked about this when we got here, that this is really a funny environment to us. It's like a classroom setting, and we've done a 10 or 11 live shows now. Mm -hmm. We've never actually talked about any of like our, in quotations, paranormal knowledge, right? Like we've been, we've been paranormal investigating and ghost hunting for over five years, and we haven't done a single episode about anything that we actually know or have learned. Yeah. And what better place to hold Paranormal 101 <laughs> than a than, classroom? Than right here in a classroom. <laughs> yeah. So maybe let's actually hold like a paranormal like class before okay. we get into all the stories that have been submitted and okay. bring them on stage. Okay. And then we'll see who remembers what. Ooh. After all the stories have been read. Okay. After really test their memory. So if anyone brought pen and paper, you're in luck. Uh, no phones allowed. If I see a single phone out taking notes, you're disqualified. <laughs> All right. What about, what about Ouija boards? <laughs> <laughs> can, they, can they use that? <laughs> they could. Yeah, okay, they could. let's do that. So with that being said, I think that's legitimately how we're going to start this show. So think about it. Whatever you want to ask, like anything paranormal wise, it doesn't necessarily have to be like a paranormal technique or anything like that. Just any kind of random paranormal 101. That includes Bigfoots and Yetis and Sasquatches and Loch Ness monsters. Big Bird. Anything you want to ask. It can be comedic or serious or anything like that. Just start thinking of questions. And this is going to be the weirdest show we're going to do ever. <laughs> without any doubt. I mean, dude, as soon as I saw Cookie Monster, I was like, yeah, this is definitely the weirdest one yet. I like that they're just in the train, just like waving at me like, ah. <laughs> okay, so while we'll give you all a moment to think of some questions, but legitimately, if no one has a question, we're just going to start pointing at random people. Yeah. But can we please talk about... How horrible it is with Jerry driving the motorhome. Oh, no. Are we about to roast Jerry right now? <laughs> <Where's> <laughs> Jerry? Jerry's not even here, which is great. So Jerry's the guy who's been doing merch, and he also drives for us. Yeah. And AKA, every time we sleep, we're in a mosh pit. Because we sleep <laughs> in the motorhome, and this dude is just yanking every turn, <laughs> slamming on the brakes. I share a bed with Ginger, my girlfriend, and I'm just elbowing her every <laughs> night. Just getting... Marty has been thrown out of the bunk bed. Yeah. No, I'm, it wasn't there a night that you literally fell off of the bunk bed? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah. casually. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A few times. There's been a few times. No, I don't know. I think may maybe Jerry's just like living like this dream. Like he always wanted to be a NASCAR driver. And now, you know, he's like driving the RV. We're all asleep. And it's just now his chance. There's no way NASCAR driver. NASCAR's, NASCAR drivers just only turn left. This dude is in fucking Formula <laughs> One. This dude is in Formula One just, just hitting everything. <laughs> 
<laughs> there was one night that I was sleeping. I woke up and I was like, is he drifting right now? <laughs> like I felt the RV kind of gliding. Yo, Jerry treats like the rumble strips on the side of the freeway. Like race car drivers treat the berm. Like they use it for extra traction. No, he <laughs> does it like Mario Kart. Like, you know, when you go over the right, like the rainbow <laughs> light up, you go faster and faster. Yeah. That's how he's treating it. Yeah, this dude, it's it's an awful experience, but it's 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 been a fun time. <laughs> All right. Paranormal 101. Does anyone have a question? Throw a hand up if you do. Uh, question. That was the first hand up. For, wait, first off, uh, what, state your name and then speak loudly. Uh, Devin? Um, no. My name is Devin. <laughs> okay, and what's your favorite color? So we're going to do this. My name is Devin, and what's your favorite color? Red. No. In one... No, but in one sentence. Uh, yeah, yeah. My name is Devin, and my favorite color is... Okay, ready? My name is Devin. My favorite color is red. Everyone say hi, Devin. Hi. Aww. <laughs> that was sweet. <laughs> and, and, and what is your question? Do you think Jerry blasts uh, the Tokyo Crypt music when he's driving an RV? Yes, we did two days ago. <laughs> no, we literally did two days ago, I swear to God. <laughs> Do you have a paranormal question? Yes. Okay. Do you think ghosts try to hit on people? Ooh. Yes. I 100% yes. Yeah. A hundred percent, I do think ghosts try and hit on people. Yeah, I definitely do as well. They, they pull pockets. So like whenever we go to prisons, it's known as like pulling someone's pocket. It's an actual thing that happens in prisons. That's how you kind of go like, hey, I'm taking you to the shower. And it's like a really common, this is a genuinely really common phenomena that happens in a lot of prisons like Missouri State Penn mm -hmm. and all throughout where they pull on your pocket to go. But it's not like anyone. It's always like the cute one. You know what I mean? Like... <laughs> Am I the cute one? Out of you and me? Yeah, dude. I don't, I don't know. I've always kind of had a crush on you. Dude, you have a pink you have a pink headband in and a perm. You and are way cuter than me. And painted nails. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Thank you. But 100%, I think ghosts hit on people all the time. And I think it's, it's both ways, not just like prison ghosts. I think there's like romantic ghosts. We've actually had an experience mm -hmm. at the Shanley Hotel where there are essentially like call girls. And if you put money down in their room they tend to have more activity there. So in that sense, it's not like they're flirting with you, but they're definitely being triggered to perform their uh, duties. Yeah. I've also heard stories from mediums where they've told me that they know people that have gotten a spirit attached to someone. And whenever the medium would be talking to that spirit, as in why they would say, because they found them attracted and they wanted to be around them all the time. Yeah. I definitely think, and also here's another thing, Loftus Hall, we went there, it's it's the place where uh, it has the devil's poker table. And the reason it's the devil's poker table is because apparently the devil visited there and impregnated the daughter of the owner and that kind of caused something. So obviously that was even beyond, right? Just flirting with, that was an actual, she had a child with a man that completely disappeared. That like, not like in 1700s disappeared, like vanished, never existed in the world again. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a lot of documentation of this, but for sure, uh, Matt, that's why he's always taking his shirt off in our videos. Yeah, that's why. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's why. <laughs> okay, I'm just going for the first hand to see up. What is, uh, you know the drill. Hey everybody, my name is Monica. My favorite color is tang. <laughs> I love this. This is so much fun. Smash or pass the animal I'm gonna, okay. I'm gonna have to Whoa. pass. Whoa, no. <laughs> I'm gonna You're gonna offend her if you pass. What? Do you, no. you have to smash Annabelle. I don't even wanna make eye contact with Annabelle. You, well, you definitely have to make eye contact when you smash. <laughs> <laughs> That's, Dude, if Anna, she can hear you right now. Stop. No. She can hear you. You have to smash Annabelle. No, you no. have to. Yes. No, this is not a law. What do you mean I have to? Dude, she's gonna be so offended if Annabelle. Annabelle. Annabelle doll is spared of like a seven-year-old though. <laughs> well, not our, not our Annabelle, not our Annabelle. No. No. And also, it was. Well, you're gonna try and trap me, and I'm about to. <laughs> oh no 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 no. But not hold our on, Annabelle. Hold on, if you oh you just want to throw out random false fucking facts, <laughs> okay? It was allegedly the spirit of a seven-year-old. It was posing as a spirit of a seven-year-old to get into the house and get into the family. So fuck you, don't try that again. <laughs> This is my fucking classroom, okay? You don't try that shit with me. Yeah, she's probably actually I'm, like a thousand. Yeah, you know? dude. I'm smashing Annabelle. Dude, she wrote the Kama Sutra. She knows every move, dude. Okay, yeah. I'm, I'm a pass, though. Uh, yeah, I think I have to smash Annabelle. Good for you. <laughs>
yeah, you know, we're just good friends. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't see it going any further than that. You don't think so? No. <laughs> no. Uh, next question. <laughs> also, phenomenal question for the record. <laughs> yeah. Next, next, next one. Next question. Next hand up. Yes. Hello, my name is Lauren. My favorite color is blue. <laughs> this is great. So, downstairs because I know you use them a lot. How how does like how do you know when it's actually like oh something in, other than me like shifting my body weight is what's moving this? So I always feel like that's <laughs> hmm. honestly it's 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 kind of like a practice thing like when i first started using dowsing rods that was my big thing i was like how do i really know if this isn't me just holding them incorrectly or if it is actually a spirit and like the honest the more you do them like you will be able to get into the right position where you're like okay they are not moving and you literally have to lock up because if you move the slightest you know they do start going so it kind of is just you have to practice doing it honestly do you ever go to the gym at all Okay, have you seen that machine where you do this? Just do a lot of those reps. <laughs> kind of, just really, you know what I mean? And just lock just lock it in right here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you're getting ready to go against Floyd Mayweather and just snap that elbow into your hip and then and just hold him as tight as you can. <laughs> or you can just like do what he did and just kind of relax. Yeah. Um, uh, sitting though, d- using, using the dowsing rods while sitting is honestly like the best way to do it, I think, because that's how you can be the most still. Yeah, create some stability around it. And then the other thing is don't, uh, a lot of people do this where they put their thumb on the top. Uh, it should be almost like a fist, like actually like you're fighting uh, Floyd Mayweather. So just create create like a fist and then that way you know there's nothing on the top on the actual rod itself that can dictate it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just try and hold still and, and you'll see. I wonder if anyone's ever put ro- dowsing rods in a stand. What do you mean? Like locked it in a stand, something that oh, doesn't move. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, uh, you're, you're it, supposed it, to be channeling it through exactly, yourself. Exactly. exactly. Okay. Yeah. Fair point. I countered my own uh, stupid idea. <laughs> Any other questions? Hi, my name is Ian. My favorite color is orange. Hi, Ian. <laughs> this is so funny. Uh, I'm just curious. Um, have you guys visited Clinton Road? Yeah. No. I, Clinton Road? Is that New Jersey? Okay. I've heard of Clinton Road. And I will say this, I, after doing this for a while, I no longer like going to locations that we don't know is secured. Mm -hmm. I don't like going to public locations like Gettysburg's or or fields or cemeteries or any kind of public places. Cause every time we've done that, we've had actually like genuinely not great encounters. Uh, Like our last visit to Suicide Bridge, uh, we had someone throw a pumpkin at us from the bridge. And then from there, it's kind of like, it's not, it adds too much stress for me to enjoy the video making process and the investigation process. So yeah. that location I've not been to, and that is a bit of the reason why I've also, we've never been to New Jersey for investigations. Yeah. What is the backstory of Clinton Road? There's a lot. There's a lot. All right, just give me, give me like a, give me like a two minute, uh, sorry, no, 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 sorry, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> give me a, a 20 page essay. Give me like a two sentence synopsis. Like you, you own Clinton road and you want us to go visit. I don't fully know the backstory. I just know it's very common to see apparitions crossing back and forth while you're driving down it. But it's a very long road that is considered the most haunted road in America. Okay. So we'll basically we'll have Jerry drive it <laughs> and he'll just, he'll just drive through all the apparitions because he doesn't care. Not around dead man's curve. Oh, it's a perfect place for Jay to drive because <laughs> that's where he's taking all of us. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I've not been to uh, Clinton Road um, or any any of those uh, those places at all. Any questions? Yes. My name is Joy. My favorite color is red. Hi, Joy. So all the places that you go to, like, do you get permission for every single one? Or have you ever, like, been somewhere that you just didn't get permission for? You just explored it out. Last place that we did not get permission for was Letchworth Village here in New York. And uh, the cops showed up. Uh, they, we were given a phone call by Evan to go, hey, cops are here. Mm-hmm. Um, so we were able to get out of the building before they showed up. So we technically were escorted away from it, but we're not arrested. But they got Evan uh, a ticket, a parking ticket, because um, he was technically parked in like a no parking zone just after 10 p.m. Yeah, That is the last place we have gone to without permission because again, Every time we've gone to places without permission, it has ended up going not very well at all. Uh, and it just, I think it take, it adds so much stress mm-hmm. to the video making process and actually being able to focus on the investigation when instead you're focusing on like, are we going to get arrested tonight? 
Um, so we avoid that at all costs. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah. What he said, I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't want to get caught breaking into somewhere. Like let's just hit him up and be like, Hey, can we come ghost hunting? You know? Yeah. We, we started that trip at King psychiatric. Yeah. Cops got us before we even got like to the gate, to the fence and then Letchworth. And then it's just like every time now it's just more and more freaking, especially because of YouTube, so many more people are mm-hmm. going to abandoned places that they're just like on top of it. Exactly. Um, and I will say, I think it's, it's worth the peace of mind and the, the, the money. Um, to just like know you have the place to yourself. It's so annoying, like when you're trying to investigate somewhere, like out in the public, you know, that anyone can go to, and like you're so deep into an investigation, you think that you're getting really good evidence and you're getting somewhere, and then, you know, here comes, you know, a bunch of high school kids screaming in the woods, like, you know, they're just watching you trying to prank you in a way, you know, they'll just go running with flashlights and stuff. It kind of, it kind of kills the vibe. We treat paranormal investigations like almost like a science experiment where we need to know we have the control. And when we have the control, then we know that anything we're hearing cannot be another person. And that's impossible with abandoned locations or just Mm -hmm. like non-permission locations. Let's say you see a figure, you know, walk by. You can't be like, was that a hundred percent a ghost or is it just someone else that's exploring? So that's, that's a big part of it too. Yeah. And uh, also Evan told me that he'll never film with us again if it's at an abandoned location without permission. Uh, <laughs> and we, and we won't film videos without Evan, like uh, paranormal investigation videos. Yeah. So any other questions? Yes. Hi, my name is Grace and my favorite color is green. Hi, Grace. Um, I was wondering like what your favorite tool is to do investigations. Ooh, favorite tool to do investigations with? I guess say REM pod. REM pod? Yeah, REM pod 100%. Okay. It's just because you actually have to, you know, either be almost grabbing it or you actually do have to grab it to make it go off. I just find that so cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like when you're not, it has, let's say you have it set up for hours and nothing's going off. And then let's say one of your other tools is kind of giving you evidence like, okay, it said that there was a man. It said that the man did this. Then you start asking questions about that. And then the REM pod starts going off. It's like, oh, I'm actually talking to that guy right now. I never really liked EVP uh, recorders because we had kind of the newer ones and the newer ones are meant to filter out background noise. And then finally, I met someone who told me about like a recorder called like a Panasonic DR60. It was essentially like a voice activated recorder. And there's some weird kind of chip technology built into it that no one's been able to replicate since. And that has now become my favorite tool. It's really expensive now because they're in like high demand. But the great part about the tour that we're on is that we only brought the same exact tool. So every night we have the same tools. So we have a control across every night where some things go off, some things don't. But this recorder... Actually, last night was the first time we ever got what we consider like a class A EVP. Yep. Like class C is like grumblings. And if you wanted to force yourself to hear it, you can hear it. Class B is like, it sounds like it, but it's kind of muffled. Class A, it sounds like you said it to me. Mm-hmm. And last night we got like the clearest one ever. And we have cameras on everyone. So we know no one in the room said it. We can look at all their mouths. We can line it up. And last night ever, after using this thing, I've probably done 300 clips on it, maybe more. Uh, and it's the first time ever we got like a class. And to me, that's like the wildest, wildest thing because REM pods or other devices like use batteries and batteries are batteries, electronics are electronics. You can't, sometimes there's weird things, but the recorder to come out with a full sentence and a voice from that's not anyone in the room yeah, is that's like the most unexplainable thing to me. So now that's like kind of my favorite thing to do. And it's also really fun because after you, you record it, everyone huddles up and listens. Mm-hmm. And it was just like, Ooh, what are we going to hear? <laughs> <laughs> and then you just see everyone like squeal and scream and everyone gets really excited. And, and, yeah. and then it kind of gives you like a better like rabbit trail to follow, you know, a better breadcrumb trail of like, okay, this is what they said. So let's start targeting questions that way. And you have like a really good starting point when you get that. So to me, that's become a really, really fun way, I think, in terms of tools uh, to investigate. Any other questions? Yes. Hi, my name is Moira. Uh, my favorite color is green. Hi, Moira. Y'all are going to get so tired of that after like <laughs> 10 more questions. You'll be like, hi, Peter. <laughs> I was wondering, out of all of the haunted places you've been, like, where has been your favorite? Which is your favorite, sir? Oh, man. What a weird noise. No, I'm just... There's just, I know, I'm, I'm honestly, I'm trying to think just because we've been to so many super cool places. Uh, maybe Warren, you know, just because of the history behind it and just how cool and rare that place is to be actually be able to go there and investigate. Yeah. It might have to be Warren. I think uh, mine would have been, even though we didn't have the craziest paranormal activity that night, would be Corvin Castle 
in Romania. I'm going to get the century wrong, but I, you know, we had a, a medieval times, basically castle completely to ourselves with the full moon out and literally no one else there but us. And regardless of the paranormal investigation, like that opportunity only existed because of the videos and because of all of you watching them. So to me, that's like one of the more surreal moments we've ever had where like we had this entire, like a whole castle to ourselves in a country mm -hmm. we had never been to with the full moon out with like my best friends and like chasing ghosts and demons. And it was just like such a cool, cool experience that I'll never forget. And then obviously, yeah, like places like Warren Museum or having the Queen Mary to ourselves. Like there's quite a few to choose from indeed, but that one always stands out to me as like just... That was so much better than my answer. <laughs> Jesus, dude. Yeah, dude. No, I changed mine to actually Dracula's castle because <laughs> castles are so beautiful. We were in another country just spending the night with my best friend in a haunted castle, you know, hearing footsteps, not knowing if it's a ghost or him coming to check on me. <laughs> I know we talked about this earlier uh, with, with the meet and greet, but can you please uh, tell them what actually happened at Corvin Castle? Are you sure about that? Yeah, I yeah, I think you have to. You, the, I think we have to. The, the clip that got cut out. Uh, yeah. Okay. So Wait, hold on. Let's let's find out. Let's ask this question: If we film ten hours a night, how much of that footage do you think does not make the video because it just can't go on YouTube? Nine no, hours. No, no. Nine. Well, you know our videos are at least an hour and a half long, so the math there. Ninety percent. It's probably thirty. It's probably twenty percent jokes that could never see the internet. Yeah, and then like twenty-five to thirty percent of like it's just nothing happened. Um, I think you should tell them. Okay, so uh, yeah, let's get into let, this story. Let, let me just let me pair, let me just phrase this by: there, We're friends. We film with our friends. <laughs> We're buddies, we hang out, and sometimes we forget the cameras are on and we're at work. Mm -hmm. uh, and Corey and the guys tend to get a little out of hand. No. <laughs> no, it's normal. You cannot tell the story if you don't want to. I'm going to tell the story. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, long story short. I think you're going to have to stand up for this, bro. There's right. no way you're going to make this story happen without oh, demonstrating. God. Okay. Pretty much, there is an area where if you stand, you know, in a certain spot, your shadow is like 20 feet tall. Let okay. me, look, can I just show you something? Yeah. You have like the perfect reenactment setting. Oh <laughs> God. Should I step up here more? <laughs> yeah, dude. Oh, no. oh, oh Wait, boy. Let me see this shadow. Oh yeah. That's a good shadow. So, uh, <laughs> so I go and I get Corbin and I'm like, yo, Corbin, come here. This will be so funny. And I'm like, Corbin, just trust me, stand right here. And Elton's on like the other side. He's like 20, 30 feet away from us. And he's like, un you know, he's getting stuff out of the ghost toolbox. And he's I'm preparing ready. for the very expensive investigation that we're about to do <laughs> at a castle that we just rented out in Romania with a full moon. Yeah. And meanwhile, I walk into, hmm? <laughs> so <laughs> I, so it's, I'm just being funny, okay? I'm just being funny. Corbin's standing right here. Um... Okay, wait, there are some younger people in the audience, so if you want to close their eyes and ears, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Uh, <laughs> just real quick. I'll make this quick. So I'm like, Elton, quick, there's a ghost over here. Look, and Elton comes running, and you just see a giant 20-foot shadow of this. <laughs> and Elton is furious. He's like, do you know how much this place is an hour? He's like, that was a $200 joke. <laughs> For everyone that's listening and can't watch this, he's basically stroking a 20-foot shadow man penis. <laughs> While making this sound effect. <laughs> And we're good. Back to PG. And, we're my, good. and mind you, this castle is $800 an hour to film at. And he did that for 10 minutes. <laughs> so if anyone wants to do the math on how much money that cost, uh, <laughs> feel free. Isn't it weird? I did it for 10 minutes. <laughs> and he only called me in for the last 30 seconds. <laughs> yeah, so strange. Uh, and, uh, back to the classroom. Anyone else have a question? Yes. yes. Uh, Jeff, favorite color, blue. Uh <laughs> Oh, we're doing this every time. Take out the renting of the space. What does it cost for a production for a night with uh, craft, film, camera, sound, audio, all that stuff? Ooh, 
okay. So tour is a completely different circumstance. So I'll eliminate that because it's kind of, it's kind of. We want to come here for a night. We'll take the renting out of it out. What's it going to cost to produce this? For me to make it, for me to make a single video, at, at least 5,000 when you factor in. So there's, there's a huge layer of expenses to it. And granted, I chose increase my expenses, right? Because I want to have a uh, better quality. And I also know that by adding more people, I'm alleviating workloads from others. Um, so that's a big part of it. One, everyone on the team gets paid. Every single person ever that has investigated with us, who is, as long as I have made money on videos, I have paid the people that have helped me do that because that's only fair. That's what's right. And as videos make more money, they get paid more. So yeah, all the camera guys get paid. And then additionally, I pay for all the travel, right? Because if I need them in New York, it's not their expense to get there. I pay for that, pay for gas. I pay for all the meals, snacks, gas station stops, like for Red Bulls and all that fun stuff. Uh, and then we have editing, we have post-production, and then sometimes they need help with thumbnails. So it adds up very quickly. And that's not factoring in costs of paranormal gear with like some devices are $3,000. Some of them are 30, right? Cameras, the cameras that we have right here are around seven to 8,000 each. Mics, Pelican cases, like things that break, batteries, like stuff like that. So at the end of the day, it's about at least $5,000 without location fees uh, to make a single overnight episode now. Yeah. Uh, granted, when we started, it was probably like a thousand because I would edit and I would film and then we just have gas and flights and travel. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely added up. But at the end of the day, like I want to make something I'm proud of. I want to make something that we can look back at and be like, man, we did a really good job. And I also pay researchers too. Um, to fact check me when I do the historical videos. So that's another, like, um, I could probably start thinking and be like, I probably, I probably lose money in my videos and you're now making me realize this. <laughs> so if you guys want to buy merch, when they <laughs> 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 but yeah. Uh, yeah. Any other, any other questions? They can, they can be funny or serious. We're, we're here. Yeah. We need one more question. At least one more question. Wait, 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 Whoa, wait, you know wait. the rules. What is the most expensive place that you've ever? I can't. I okay. I can't say the real answer. Yeah. Uh, I, just, I can't say the real answer. It just. It, it would. Uh, I just can't do that. Um, the second most expensive. Second most. I can say the second most. Uh, second most would be Queen Mary. Uh, Queen Mary entirely to ourselves about twelve thousand um, dollars. That's why those videos are two parts, right? <laughs> That's it's literally why they're two parts because I have to cut that expense across different videos. If not, I need like 3 million views to break even and that's not feasible. So yeah, that one's 12,000 because it's the Queen Mary. And then on top of that, it's you have to go through Long Beach. You have to go through the city permit. You have to get the fire marshal clearance. They have to have staff on board that are like $125 an hour. So that one is extremely expensive. And then like built more presidential suite, that's 5,000 a night. So like some locations get really, really pricey. Um, but yes, I think it's definitely, definitely Queen Mary. My most expensive uh, <laughs> location for a video on my channel was uh, I got a lot of stuff off the McDonald's menu one time. <laughs> and it was, it was about $72. Your most expensive video is how much I spend on McDonald's for you every day. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, like, that's like four Red Bulls. At the <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Here's the thing about that. Queen Mary's awesome but we've had some of our best experiences ever and houses that were like 200 bucks. Mm -hmm. Like Blair House, when we rented it out, I think it was 200 or 250 um, for the night and like phenomenal, phenomenal experience. Some locations have been free uh, because they just want you to make a cool YouTube video uh, and they're like super stoked on it. So yeah. I will say like the expensive ones, the hyped up ones, sometimes like they live up to it, but honestly like, I think like the smaller ones have been fantastic as well. No like discrimination there. So if anyone feels like, oh, I can't afford the expensive one, it's okay. Go, like go to the go to the cheaper one. It's like it's just it, you make it as much fun as you want it to be. Mm -hmm. As much energy as you bring into it, the better. And also a smaller location like a house is way easier to fill up with your energy than the Queen Mary. Yeah. Like to fill up a two bedroom house is like we can just make a couple jokes. To fill up the Queen Mary, we're like, let's go. Like you need so much more like energy to fill that place up. It's like it's draining. Like by the end of it, just it's a million square feet. Yeah, I want the sixteen hundred square foot house. I mean, look what you did to bring in energy last time we were at the Queen Mary. Oh yeah, Mister Possess. Yeah, <laughs> let me just fly into black magic witches and yeah, yeah, just conjure up some evil spirits. Yeah, fun, fun time. I could have just done that in your bedroom. That would have been free. No. <laughs> That's okay. That's all right. <laughs> what if I brought you McDonald's? Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> Make it a double, double plane. Can you please put the evil spirit of Ronald McDonald inside me? <laughs>
Could you imagine <laughs> if someone was haunted by Ronald McDonald? Think about that. I would not be mad. What, you're sleeping and fries are flying on you? You know what I mean? It's like, oh no. Wow. Damn it. You would never get a happy meal again, though. Why? It would be a sad meal. Aww. <laughs> he hates you. Aww. Back to the show. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> yes. Hi, I'm Brandon Lobby. Uh, you're close to So. Uh, have there been any experiences that we as fans on the other side of the screen have we made aware of at all? Or like things that you saw in the document properly or shit with those? Ooh, that happens pretty often where the cameras yeah. are completely off. Yeah. And we're like, ah, and we don't get it. Or we've had instances uh, where footage has just been like absolutely obliterated. I think uh, McRaven House. Uh, that we tried, we tried and tried and tried and tried to get that footage back and we never could. And that was like the coolest thing up until that point that I'd ever had happen to me. And that footage was just like obliterated. But there's a few times, I mean, you're the one who'd always be like, Hey Elton, come here. The cameras are off. Like mm -hmm. Yorktown. I remember. I was going to say that Yorktown. I'll never forget that. That was, that was one of the coolest things I feel like I've experienced with you because we were done filming and I was like, Elton, check this out. Just there's no cameras on. This was, I mean, how many years ago was this? I think I'm going to have to go with 2018, maybe early, early 2019. Wow. So it was kind of when we were really getting into ghost hunting, yeah. taking it more seriously. Yeah. Cameras are off. There's no one else in the building. I think you asked me to lock up or something. And I was like, I'm not doing that. So I was like, you're coming with me. Yeah. I was like, hey, Corey, I got to load all the shit in. Would you mind just putting the lock on the door? And, and I said, like, no, I said, you're following me. So I was like, come inside, just watch this. Like, there's no one else in here. Like, just stand next to me and let's just listen. And I was like, if there's anyone in here, can you please make a noise or give us a sign? And like a Coca-Cola can starts rolling towards us just down the hall. And then we ran. Did you run? No. Or did I run? You ran. I ran. <laughs> You ran, I went to go get the lock that I still need to put on the door because you didn't do it. But it was it was just so cool because I feel like that moment was just like a, I don't know, it's not, it's not a more activity happens when the cameras aren't rolling, but I feel like spirits are sometimes more willing to interact when there's less, not so much less people around, but just less pressure less on them. Less documentation, less eyes watching them. Yeah. But yeah, there's there's quite a few times, honestly, where investigations are over because like everyone needs to go to sleep. But Corey and I are still just like wide awake and we're like, you just want to stay up here for like an hour or two? Yeah. We, we do that like pretty often where it's like 4.30, 5 in the morning and we're like, I don't know, like we're here, the gear's out, like let's just keep going, see what happens. And yeah, like it's- We get some pretty good stuff. We, we document enough where I feel comfortable sometimes just like, it's okay that the camera's not on. Um, but yeah, we've also had like instances like we were at Waverly Hills just a little while ago with a total of 22 people and you include camera crew and everyone. And we had something, there was one five minute break in a seven hour span. And in that five minute break, this ball just starts rolling on its own. And for some reason, no one pulled their phone out. Yeah. Everyone and just started screaming. Everyone started screaming for me. I'm a hundred feet away. He yeah. has a phone in his pocket. Well, I was screaming, but <laughs> like everyone's like Elton film this, film this. And I get over there. And by the time I clip it on, I get like the last millisecond of it. I'm like, why did no one pull their phone out? They're like, we were scared. <laughs> and like, yeah. so those kind of things happen too. Like where camera has to be on, but now we have a rule uh, where if one camera's off, the other has to be on. And whenever we break that rule, is when something like it happens. Mm -hmm. Quite a few things happen like when the cameras are off uh, by choice or by the spirit's choice. Any other questions? Ooh. Oh. Yes, we had two. Uh, <laughs> you, you may go. My name is Anna. My favorite color is black. Uh, uh, yeah. Hi, Elton. Hi. Um, I have a question for you. Yeah. Um, I'm just curious because you mentioned that you were doing the ghost hunting for like a couple of years. Yeah. Um, and that you guys would be interested in doing like an urban legend series where you would investigate like Skinwalker Ranch or War Roswell, like aliens instead of going like the spirit route. Oh, you just got me amped up. Okay. Okay. So we were, let's say we were 90% there to doing a full blown week long video stay at Skinwalker Ranch. We were that close. We were talking to Lou Elizondo. We were talking to Jeremy Corbell. Like we were right there. And then all of the articles started dropping and they just got swamped with interview after interview after interview and they couldn't do it. And now someone else has like the rights 
to it. So like, you know, is, there's a Netflix series, there's all these like Hulu, Amazon, like all these big budget productions have it. But man, did I want to do that so bad. Yeah. We, we were literally like, we actually have, we did an Area 51 video, saw something really cool and we're able to get Lou Elizondo to do like a Zoom call with us. And if you don't know Lou Elizondo, he's just like, probably one of the most like renowned UFO extraterrestrial experts out there. And he has like the, the resume to back everything he's saying, mm -hmm. um, similar to like a Bob Lazar situation. But I really, really, really wanted to do that one. I just thought it'd be so cool to spend a week camping, get abducted, like watch, just watch some cows get like lasered into little pieces, like yeah. all this crazy stuff just happening. Just watch Corey get dragged away by a skinwalker. Yeah. It just, it would have been like such a nice like boys trip. Yeah. That would have been a great getaway. It would have been so great. Yeah. Have you wanted to do that? Cause sometimes I'm just like, Corey, uh, we're going to skinwalker ranch and you're like, all right. <laughs> it's kind of stuff like that, that, you know, I, you know, I'll do it, but I'm very terrified to do something like that, you know? Because there's a lot more, I don't know, I don't know if I want to say history behind it, but it's just, there's a lot more, oh, what's, what's the word? Like not religion. I mean, is, is it kind of religion in a way? Like for centuries, people have grown up like seeing those things and like believing in those, like it's, they're a hundred percent real. Like when we're ghost hunting, you know, like you can't go somewhere and you know, they're like a hundred percent ghosts are real. Like obviously we believe in ghosts, but it's stuff like, you know, at Skinwalker Ranch, like. I don't know. It's just kind of, it's kind of demonic to me. And like, I, I just feel like they are a hundred percent real and they, those things really can kill you. Like those things really can abduct you and take you away and hurt you. But like, but you know, going to fun, even if you had a GoPro, no, you're just like floating. You're like, Oh, Hey guys, no, this not, is my last no. video. No, <laughs> I'll see. Not at all. Just in your chair. Just like, see, ya. <laughs> <laughs> no, like going to a haunted location. I'm okay with that. Like we're going to set up our tools. But going to somewhere like that, like you could actually die. That's right? fun. Yeah, but it's, that is not fun. It's fun. No, that is not your fun. Your adrenaline's to me. pumping. It's just you and the guys. No, you know, no. Get, just getting laser beam shot at you. No. You know, just in the mountains. No. You know what I mean? You you barely survive. You're like, we need to cuddle for warmth. No. Right. And you're like, it's 100 degrees out. And I'm like, just, I need you. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? No, I'd, I'd rather have a K2 and talk to Lily than get eaten by Bigfoot. I really want to do it. Okay, you have to pick one, not ghost. One other paranormal, Bigfoot, Sasquatch, Yeti, Loch Ness Monster, Skinwalkers. You have to hunt one of them for a month. What is it? Could it be like aliens? Like UFOs? But you just said, what the, you just no, said. No, I'm cool with that. What you just said, you don't. Skinwalkers are not aliens. You don't know that. It's Skinwalker Ranch. It's known for documentation of UFOs and abductions. I don't want to put this out there, but I'm, I mean, like, I feel like if I got like, taken away by aliens it'd be kind of cool in a way like if they're cool aliens you know what i mean yeah because think about the amount of stuff that they know that we don't like they're literally just flying around up there mm -hmm. like they can come here whenever they want and so like i guess if an alien could speak english and if they were nice and they abducted me and we were just flying around the world i'd be okay with that dude you sound like you want a sugar daddy <laughs> <laughs> You just described a sugar daddy. Like if he was nice and he's like French, but he speaks English and he has a private jet. He just wants to take me all over the world and like just buy me dinner. Like I would be okay with investigating his jet. I would. So that's what you want. You don't want an alien. You just, you want to, yeah. Okay. Uh, just uh, DM me on Instagram if you're listening to this. <laughs> so aliens, you would go a oh. month long search for aliens. A hundred percent. So. Yes. Skinwalker, Skinwalker Ranch. Because you can't get into Area 51. You can't get into Roswell. It has to be Skinwalker Ranch. There's no better place. But is a Skinwalker an alien? We or don't know. is it like a mystical creature that just kills you? Or it could be both in the same place. It may be aliens made Skinwalkers. You don't know. Like I said, if they're nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Final answer. Aliens. Final answer. Aliens. Yeah. Okay. I really still, I'm, I'm putting it out there right now to the universe. I really still want to go to Skinwalker Ranch. I mean, I'll go to Skinwalker Ranch. Promise? But, yeah, I promise. Mm, yeah! I'm putting it out there. It's now in the universe. Oh, You're going no. to Skinwalker Ranch. Okay, but can we like, <laughs> like sleep in a hotel and not there or something? <laughs> no. No? You can find a sugar daddy. Maybe he'll fly into the jet, take you out in the middle of the night and bring you back in the morning. 
So if you're listening, my Instagram is at Corey Shear. <laughs> Just DM me if you want to give me this opportunity. What non like ghost spiritual world phenomena would you like to see us make an episode on? I would say Sin Walker Ranch. Just because like the stuff that I've seen about it, a lot of it looks more like UFOs and aliens versus like the cultural side of it being Sin Walker and like Native American. So I think that would be a really good investigation for you guys. Or Bigfoot, because everyone loves Bigfoot. Dude, I would love Yo, that. Yo, we would have so much fun. All right, boy, we're going to get Bigfoot. I would love that. <laughs> I would dress up like Littlefoot and be like, <laughs> Papa. <laughs> From the land before time. Is that, wait, what? The land before, you guys remember the land before time? Is that it's a dinosaur foot. movie, yeah, right? It's a okay, dinosaur. Okay, got it. You would dress up like a dinosaur to hunt for <laughs> Bigfoot. No, I just meant we're just like two little feet, just looking for Papa. <laughs> Bigfoot would be so much fun. I would love to go Bigfoot hunt because you know the people that like would be like, "I'll go spend a week with you." Like those people are like, "Oh yeah, like yeah. this is gonna be good." <laughs> That'd be so much fun. Have you seen the videos of people pranking Bigfoot hunters? Oh yeah, I saw Nelk did oh one. I saw I saw gosh, that one, dude. Those hunters have to be so mad. You met, wait, has that prank gone wrong yet? Because like they're hunting Bigfoot, they, their goal is to shoot him. Or they're just like, oh look at. <laughs> 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 they go up to him. Oh, that's your cameraman. <laughs> has that gone wrong yet? I don't think it's gone wrong. And they're yet. not very good hunters. That's probably why they can't catch them. Well, I don't. Well, are they really trying to kill Bigfoot though, or are they just trying to get like pictures? No, they're hunters, dude. I don't know. I feel like a Bigfoot hunter wants to like bring back the marlin and put it on display. Could you imagine? <laughs> you go to like a cabin Airbnb and it's Bigfoot <laughs> just hanging up in the living room, or they above make, the pool table. They make a mistake. They think they have this like seven foot six dude, and Guinness World Records is like, no, that's just the world's tallest. <laughs> man <laughs> he didn't need to die <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> any other any other questions things you want to yes sir um my name's julio my favorite color is black Ooh, edgy favorite color is black <laughs> what's something behind the scene sort of like after your investigation have you guys ever been like something's attached to you guys or something like following you guys or something like along those lines yeah that happens to me a lot a lot of times after trips, I'll go home and a lot of weird things will start happening and I'll kind of sage myself. I'll kind of like sage my room if I have to, or especially my girlfriend's apartment. I think a lot of, a lot of things have followed me. And for some reason they're staying at my girlfriend's apartment. And, you know, I don't know what locations they're from. So I don't know if they're good spirits. I don't know if they're evil spirits, but a hundred percent I know stuff has followed me home and obviously this came to our house as well. I saw someone walk into his office when we were having a conversation in the living room. There was no one in the office. We went and checked. So that's, that's, that's where the entire museum is. At. When we're at home, it all lives in my office. Yeah. And so I, you know, I carry a lot of crystals, you know, um, I constantly, every day I play uh, frequency music, you know, I'll turn on, you know, good frequency sounds, you know, whatever mood I'm feeling that day. And I just pray a lot and I just always say like you know you're not allowed to follow me like you're not allowed to be here you need to leave and then I've also learned from mediums they tell me there's an on and off switch so when I start getting activity at home and I'm just chilling I'll go in my brain and I'll turn that switch off and that activity will stop you know it will stop for a couple of days or even a couple of weeks but then something weird will happen again and I kind of just repeat that whole process he also failed to mention that during this trip we've had a lot of Strange things happen well beyond cameras are off, like in the motorhome mm -hmm. and technical malfunctions paired with spiritual malfunctions that have happened. So this trip has been very interesting. But ever since you've started closing things down properly, it hasn't happened since. That is correct. That is yeah. correct. So that is, that is correct. You know, I'm still learning. You know, I'm having, especially Patty. Patty's teaching me a lot. You know, we've been texting Patty and she's been helping me on what to say and how to open myself up and open veils. And a lot of nights I will open the veil and I realize, oh, I haven't been doing anything to close the veil. But since I have started closing the veil more recently, uh, not as much has been happening. I mean, it's only been, what, a day and a half since I closed the veil? Yeah, dude, yeah, yeah. But I mean, three days ago, I was up by myself in the RV like 630 in the morning. So someone kept talking to me and opening my bed curtain all the way. And I was just so calm. I was just like, oh. The spirits in here talking to me while I'm going to bed. I just closed it and fell asleep. 
it's it's pretty wild. It's honest, it's honestly insane how calm I am now compared to if that happened to me a year ago, I would have Ubered to a church. <laughs> Immediately, I would have sat out there till they opened. <laughs> I'd be like, "Hey, so a demon opened up my curtain." <laughs> uh, in t- in terms of beyond the location, I-, I don't think I've ever had anything like follow me to the house. What beyond the location is what I said. What about the what about the doll moving in the uh, in the intro? Whatever, huh? dude. What what about what about the dolls doll move, dude? They do that on their dolls own. move, dude. dude it's, Things happen, bro. Stuffed dolls move. Yeah, dude. Okay. Sometimes things just happen. You know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe that was Annabelle's way of saying, I need to smash. <laughs> she, she was just like, hey. <laughs> oh my God. Um, I, yeah, I don't think anything spiritually has ever followed me beyond a location. I think I kind of, without saying it out loud, I just, I don't know. I have that line that's drawn. But what I will say is I think all the investigations become mentally taxing on you because I'd probably say 95% of the times you're not dealing with very lighthearted stories. It's very rare that you're dealing with like a super positive story. Like this Casper the ghost, right? That isn't really a thing. So you're constantly hearing about and asking questions about incredibly traumatic things that have happened to inmates or boys in their form school or orphan children. And you're like, you're spending six hours to seven hours a night in that world. And that's the last thing you do before you go to sleep. And then you think about doing it the next day. And at a certain point, it kind of just like gives you this weird, just overall like kind of hazy outlook on the world. And so I think like spacing out investigations, um, which is what we do, like we film in heavy blocks and then we take big gaps. Um, I think that has more so been the effect on me uh, is just like kind of always like who did this to you? Like what happened? Like what's wrong? Like it's a lot of like trauma. And when you realize yeah. these are real people, you know, yeah, uh, it's very it's, heavy. yeah I don't know how like therapists uh, do that and like mental health, like practitioners like are able to do that. That's, that's it's so much respect to those people that are like face to face and getting direct answers and be able to just keep going to work every day. Like, mm-hmm. man, that's such a, like a powerful person that can do that. So yeah, for sure. But, um, yeah. Last question. Then we'll go into these stories. Hey, my name is Leo and my favorite color is black. The question is, have you ever, uh, encountered an entity that has hurt you? Have you been hurt physically? I've gotten nauseous from it. You know, I felt, you know, obviously sick from it, stuff like that. Like, pain in my bones and then as soon as we leave the location I'm perfectly okay but I don't think like physically like something hurts me no I don't think so I mean I've definitely had suicide forest I like got really nauseous Preston Castle I've gotten really nauseous uh I think Blair House I had like three tiny little scratch marks on me but I don't think I've ever had I mean that's what I want for the record like I would love to just be like look at my back it's just like just flash marks across it I actually know while I have had scratches I have been scratched. Oh, yeah. Yorktown. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. I have been. I think I've been scratched somewhere else, too. I was very jealous of that, by the way. (laughs) I was like, why not not me? Like, they're always pulling (laughs) your pocket. They're always scratching your back. Just one time. (laughs) So I guess I I have been scratched, you know, but I don't think that's, I don't think that's bad. You know, it's not like a broken bone. (laughs) You know what I mean? His back was bloody. (laughs) I mean, dude, I've broken like over 60 bones. Okay. I can take a little scratch. Say that next time when we're investigating. No. Be like, I'm not offering. Oh, you're to in get a prison. Scratched. You should go walk right into the middle of the cafeteria tonight and be like, look, dude, I've broken 60 bones. Like, <laughs> give me whatever you got, huh? <laughs> well, actually, uh, last night, this was happening to me and Marty. Both of our crystals that we were wearing were like hurting us. Like they it felt like it just felt like the crystals were being pushed into us the whole night, which was kind of strange. Aren't they protection crystals? Mm-hmm. Mm, you should return them. No. Someone sold you some bad crystal, bro. No, we actually... You, uh, you got to get a new crystal dealer because... We actually recharged them today. So, oh, really? Uh, I love you, Marty. Did you plug them into the 12 volt car charger? What? No, I, I plugged them into my phone battery. <laughs> yeah. How do you charge crystals? Um, You put them underwater. Like, you know, it has to be... So like, you drown run- them? Yep. No, no. It has to be like running water. And uh, you just say a couple things and you charge it up. Okay. Yeah. I just learned how to charge it today. <laughs> so you cannot ask me what I say. Okay. Marty knows. Okay. 
Do you, do you all hear how just wild this is that he's like, I just learned how to cleanse myself today. No, not cleanse myself, how to charge up a crystal. But why, why didn't you learn all of this so many years ago? I don't know. Why don't you just spend one day not on TikTok <laughs> and just read, hey, how do I keep Satan out of my soul? <laughs> You know what I mean? Just spend a little bit of time. Like we're in class. Look at all these students. And you, here you are, a teacher, and you haven't taught yourself anything in a while. Well, I, I had someone teach me something new today. So thank you, Marty. <laughs> clap, clap. <laughs> See, we're all still learning. We're all still learning. <laughs> the day you stop growing is the day you stop learning. <laughs> I'm getting that tatted. Well, that was uh, that was actually kind of fun. Okay, so this we're, we're gonna read a story each, and these have been submitted by uh, people that are right here among you. We've made sure that they're here. After we read the story, we'll bring them up on stage to hear a little bit more about it. Um, but we're always looking for stories that we like haven't heard before or stand out to us. Should I just? I'll just read it normally, eh? Yeah, yeah. All right, I'll read this normally. Sometimes we do weird voices, but I think sometimes I read it like this. And I'll, everyone hates it. I'll be honest, your voice last night was... Can you just give him a little sample? Give him a little sample of, like, your voice last night. The haunted homies. <laughs> Anyone else? No? Wow, just me. See, they like <laughs> this more. <laughs> this story includes multiple parts, but I'm going to pull it into one. Some background information before I start is that my family and I are what some would call empaths, psychics, clairvoyant, whichever. I've always been a believer, especially with my older brother introducing me to ghost adventures when I was about seven, and I've been hooked ever since. Smiley face. Okay, so the story starts about three years ago at my current house. My house isn't haunted, but definitely has spirits that wander through ever so often, but could also be that it is 100 years old. One night, as I'm getting ready for bed, I have the feeling that I'm being watched, but just ignore it. I get a well rest, but woke up to my mom freaking out about seeing a demon that was outside our bedrooms while we were asleep. She said that it stood at the end of our hallway, it was about six or seven feet tall, black face and eyes, and was just smiling at her. It stood outside my brother's bedroom, almost taunting as if it was going to do something to him. Then it continued outside of my bedroom and lastly went to her and my dad's room. It supposedly stood over my father, who then started choking and coughing in his sleep. She knows certain prayers to say for entities like this because my grandfather did many exorcisms back in his day. She said something along the lines of, in the name of the Holy Spirit, I send you back to where you came from. It still kept its creepy smile, but slowly started to back away and down the stairs. This obviously made me paranoid when going to sleep, but eventually got over it. Last year, out of the blue, I decided to show my parents the Conjuring 2 movie because I loved the series. When it got to the scene where the nun was in the hallway looking at Lorraine and Judy, my mom says, oh my God, that is what was standing outside of our bedrooms two years ago. Nearly shit myself. When she, it says nearly shit myself when she said this and just stared at her in disbelief. The entire movie, she kept looking away from the screen because of how similar and evil it looked. So to this day, I always trust my gut when I feel I am not alone and have learned to cleanse myself if necessary because in my family, things like this are normal. Damn. <laughs> Yo, that's, uh, that's pretty terrifying. What's, what's the nun's name? What's the name of that uh, spirit again? Uh, well, if it's Conjuring 2, it should be Bathsheba. Is that what it is? If, I, if, I am, if I'm correct, it should be Bathsheba. Bring them on stage. Yeah. Uh, Mary... Are you, are you here, Mary Espinal? Join us on stage, please. Okay. That... Was it a doozy? It was definitely, it, definitely a doozy. It was a demon, but we can call it a doozy, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hold the mic just like... Right yeah, there. yeah. You gotta yeah. like talk into it. Okay. Like almost like it's like your, like your 10th grade crush and you're like, oh, should we yeah. kiss? But like we can't because we're at school. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that kind of, that kind of range of like, you yeah. know what I mean? Like... <laughs> Like that? Yeah. 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 Right, Something right, like right. that. So, okay. So tell us about the story. Yeah. So this is like normal. There's a lot of spirits in my house. My mom, we think that something's attached to my dad's side of the family because we've always had dreams of like this shadowy person that just kind of haunts over my dad. And we've had dreams where like it says 
I'm going to come back on your 54th birthday. And that's the day when his dad died. We It was of a heart attack, but we didn't know, like, what happened. So we think that it's kind of attached to him. But my mom's just kind of like, you know, I love him, so <laughs> I'll deal with it. And then wow. it's just like me and my brother were just like, yeah, daddy, you need to, like, leave. We need to leave. <laughs> What? <laughs> Wait, you trying to kick your dad out? No, because like he's really negative, so things tend to attract to him. And my mm. mom's like, "Be positive. Here's a crystal. Bathe yourself in holy water." Like the other bathe? Last week. No, like just have like. Yeah. Are you guys just showing up to church with a wheelbarrow? No, no, no. Like, no, hey, no. Father, can you fill it up? <laughs> no, like last week we had a um, a priest bless our house. Of we course do it, he like, did. Every, yep. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, okay. of course. It's like annual, but we do it for like safety reasons. Like, just because a lot of things attach to us on the, like, my parents are outside. They're like, did you bring holy water here? I was like, no. They're like, really? You didn't? I was like, no, I didn't. But it's fine. Like, the experience. It's amazing. Okay. And you're saying it's on your father's side. Yeah. Which means it's on your grandfather's side. Yeah. Who performed exorcisms? My mom's side performed exorcisms. Oh, your mom? Oh, they're okay. both haunted. I yeah. just kind of. They're, it's, You're trying to put know. it all on all on your dad, and here you go. You got your mom's father is just like, get out of here, I'm <laughs> Satan. Like, well, you can't put that all in your dad. Yeah, I mean, it's both because, like, my grandfather, he passed away last year, but um, he used to do, like, exorcisms. Like, we live in DR. Like, my family's from DR, so it's just all terrain, farms. So there's a lot of things of like witchcraft because like Hades right next to us. So we always, I always grew up with like the paranormal. So I never thought it was weird until I go to my friends when I'm little and they're like, I see spirits. And they're like, really? And then they go and tell their parents and they're like, that's not normal. I'm like, well, I didn't know that. I just saw them. Like they're kind of just kind of like walking around sometimes. I don't see it as weird. But then my friends, like I will send them videos of like voices and stuff. And they'll send me videos of them crying. They're like, this is why I can't ever hang out with you, Mary. Like, this is, I'm like. You have a weird friend group. Yeah. You just, your friends just send you voice. Normally I get a voice message from Corey like, hey, would you mind like picking up some snacks for me on the way back? Yeah. And your friends are like, I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> but like, they know because me, okay, my mom and my brother, I guess we're psychics. They have dreams of people. We've had dreams of like before people have died and then they go to the funeral and they're exactly how we see it. For me, it's kind of like, I feel when people die, not the greatest feeling, but I've had it. I'm like, I've, I remember taking a nap once and I felt really bad. And then when I woke up, I was like, it's kind of okay, but I don't know. My mom was like, oh yeah, the neighbor just died. He took a nap and he didn't wake up. And I literally saw him being carried out of the stretcher and same, it's happened to like 10 plus people. Oh my God. So you should stop going to parties. Yeah. <laughs> and stop introducing your family. Okay. Has your grandfather, yeah. did he ever share any stories with you about exorcisms? Because I've never, I don't, I've never met anyone who has performed an right. exorcism. Mm -hmm. So what, like, what did you hear about that? Okay, well, it was in Spanish, so I'm going to translate it to English as best as I can. But he had a neighbor that had a disability. So every time he ate, he would always eat really quickly. He knew how he was and he passed and, but he had a brother. So when he went to visit the brother... He was kind of like, he's acting really strange. I don't know what it is. He's like, I think something is possessing him, but I don't know what it could be. So he told the wife of the brother, and he was like, can you give him food? I want to see something. And he ate just exactly how his brother that had passed ate. And like, he kind of looked at him and he goes, yeah, you were the one that made fun of me when I was alive. You made fun of how I ate. So he would like, he, I think he told him to like get on the bed and he started saying prayers. He was like gargling from the mouth, like shaking profusely. My grandfather had a bunch of prayers. I don't know where they are now, but he always had that like in him that he would just be like, no, that's not him in him. Like he'd be like, that's not the same eyes. That's not the same gestures. He's not the same person. He would just know. Have you ever had a desire to perform an exorcism and live out that family kind of <laughs> profession? No. You really, like, you know, some parents are like, we really want you to be a doctor. Grandparents no. were like, we really want you to perform. No. <laughs> no? <laughs> I've never. I think it's just because my mom's like, you guys, like to me, my brother, she's like, you guys have really great energies, but it is to the point where it's like things will get attached to you so quickly that it's like, it's like a moth to a flame. She's like, you guys have great energy, but things like tend to stay with us. So that's why she was like, you know, try not to dive too into this. And I was like, I heard you guys were on tour. I was like, I already bought it. So I can't do anything. She was like, really? 
I was like, yeah. Oh. So can we send your mom a video of us like pretending to open a Dybbuk box? <laughs> she probably, she doesn't know what that is, so. Oh, really? Maybe. No. Oh, okay. I didn't tell her about that. Oh. Because <laughs> <laughs> wow. I, I was like, mm, it's fine. She just knows what I'm here. So what was her kind of like reaction though to you coming here tonight? Was it bad? No, I was just like some, well, I'm going she, Her mom has no idea where she is. Oh no, she's they're apparently outside. at school right now. Oh, they're yeah. outside. Yeah. Oh, they're out. They're yeah. outside. No, 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 they know. Like they know, but then I was just like, because I wanted to invite my cousin. He was like, "Oh my god, they're gonna have the dibby boxes," and I was like, "Yes, they are. You should pull up." And then he didn't. So wait, can we have a PTA meeting? Why call in her parents and and be like, <laughs> "Okay, we have an issue. Your daughter has been playing with demonic items." <laughs> no, that no, no, she get grounded. We cannot do that. No, it's okay. Have you seen? this entity since like has it ever ruminated um, and, and stayed around it's not shown itself to me more to my brother he lives in chicago but he still like gets he will like f like call me he's like something's weird what are you doing and i'm like it's fine and then it's like i think about five months ago or so we had like a dream and it was of me my mom and my brother we all had the same dream and we were like it's of this black thing that keeps following us i don't know why and so we went to my grandfather's house and he was like, he had dementia, but he was like out of it. But somehow when we told him, he was like, oh yeah, like whatever that is came from uh, the depths of the ocean to get you guys. And we didn't, we didn't tell him. He just kind of knew. So we were like, that's weird. We didn't tell you that. Do you think that someone put a curse or something? We've thought yeah. of that before because ugh, this is on the internet, but it's okay. Um, you sure? Yeah, they're actually. This We're about to get deep. So, okay. But like my my mom's side has been known, like it's if it's dabbled, it's kind of more of a legend, whatever that they did witchcraft. So like I think it was like my like five great 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 something grandfather that he suddenly got rich one day and we never knew why and that supposedly he sold his soul to the devil. This we don't know on your mother's side. Yeah, and yet you blame your father. Yeah. <laughs> Just want to remind you that that is exactly what's happening. Yeah. And I think you owe Papa an apology. Yeah. PTA meeting at... <laughs> <laughs> Carry on. No, but it's just like, um, we never knew because he was just, I mean, he was fine. He wasn't poor. But the next day he got extremely rich, popularity, whatever. And we were just like... And so like supposedly that there's like a box somewhere on land that he put a bunch of things in it and buried it. And we don't know where it is. We're not going to look for it either because it just gives us bad vibes. Is he a witch or a pirate? Both. Both. Yeah. Ooh, the both. pirate witch. Carry on. <laughs> but like, I mean, there's so many other stories besides that in my family that it's like, I tell my friends and they're like, this is normal. This, of course this happened to you. I'm like, yeah, it's, I don't know how to explain it. Wow. Has anyone actually come forward in the family and said, yes, we practice witchcraft? No. We like, they strictly don't believe, like they don't like to do anything related to that. It's me, my mom and my brother that do mostly like crystals, saging, um, like little scents, we will always do that like every week. But everyone else is kind of like, mm. Do you find it kind of interesting that you're like, your great parents were kind of like Twilight? Like, you know what I mean? Vampires yeah. and werewolves. <laughs> but it's like you have an exorcist and a witch. Yeah. And they're just like, but they find love. Yeah. You know what I mean? Did, yeah. you, ever not, did you ever notice that? Not until you're just too busy that. blaming your dad yeah. to think about that? That's yeah. kind of romantic, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, that kind of is romantic. So do you believe your, your grandmother practiced witchcraft? I Is that don't how they know. met? Your I your grandfather no was called in to perform an exorcism. And he like he, as he like looked into her eyes, removed the evil. He saw her pure soul and was like, "Wow, this I'm gonna could marry this woman now." I, I have no idea. It's just kind of it's always like legend. You never know about it, but then every time you bring it up, it's like always something happens in the house. You'll see a shadow in the house. I'm like, carry on. I keep doing whatever I need to do. Like I will literally sit down somewhere. And my, I'll like look in the corner. I'm like, oh, there's someone standing there, and they're like, "You can't do this to us, Mary. Like this is insane." But it's like, I'm used to this, so it's... That's why I love the paranormal. You love the paranormal because your friends refuse to hang out with you? <laughs> no, they hang out with me either way, though. Okay. They used to be. Do, any, do you feel you have any friends that hang out with you because of your abilities and your sensitivities? Like, any friends are like, ooh, what are you doing tomorrow night? You want to just go to the cemetery and <laughs> drive around just to, like, kind of for the thrill of it? No. I think they're all kind of scared of that part, so I never talk about it. But it's like, I like to scare them 
because I like the movie It. So I can make, I'm not going to make the face, but I can make his you like, have to. Sk- I can. You have to. I can. You just said you can do it. No, but so like, you have like to. it's the end. No. Uh, we I, we, we <laughs> no. will call your parents in here. We <laughs> will re- demand that they show up. Okay. Can you do it? No, 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 no. Okay. It's like, right, no. But like, I always do that. Like, I love watching scary movies. I like hiding in closets and I'll open it just a creek and I'll make that face and they get so scared. But I love it though. <laughs> How often do you just bullshit just to mess with your friends? And Sometimes. be like, hey, Angela, uh, don't look to your left. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I'll be like, oh my, like, I think um, they were like, my friends are watching one of your videos and I needed to go somewhere. And I was like, what if there's something in your closet? watching you right now and her I knew her door was open and I was like what if it's just waiting for me to hang up and she started crying and I was like oh oh and, and I'm, I'm lying and, and then I think she went and she like had like her mom on the phone and everything she was like you can't do this to me Mary I know who you are I'm like I was just I was just kidding oh, wow. I'm fine. but like I always scare them <laughs> I find it fun how many how many times have you canceled on your friends and be like sorry I can't do it uh the demon is just he won't <laughs> let me leave sorry uh <laughs> that's a good excuse I mean, yeah, but they haven't done anything. Like they haven't asked me, oh, is, there, is there something here? Cause they know like, if I look into a corner, like, all right. They don't need to ask you, you tell them yeah. anyway. Yeah, 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 it's true. What but, yeah. was it about the 54th birthday that you said earlier? Cause my dad, I think he's 53, but um, heart disease runs in his family. So heart attacks happen a lot. Mm. And his father died at 54. And the dream that we had was like last year and um, the entity was like, we'll come back. I'll come back for your husband at 54. Cause that's like, that's some, I don't know why we just thought of that. And then we kind of connected it later that it was like, oh, your dad, didn't he die at 54 of a heart attack? And he has, he's already, my dad's already had three heart attacks and a stroke. So we were just like, you need to be on edge. Like we will look after you, but he's yeah. always just like, no, it's fine. Live life on the edge. I'm like, do you guys kind of have a plan? of like something that you're gonna do? I mean, we never really thought about it. Cause again, like people always say like, well, if you bring attention to it, it's gonna happen. So we're just kind of like, you know, don't think about it. It's True. fine. True. So like, but if anything, we know like the right people to call. We're like, I mean, my mom is more religious than I, or my siblings are. So mm-hmm. it's just kind of like, okay, she'll say a prayer. She'll do whatever. And then that's it. I mean, I'm intrigued. Intrigued. I feel bad for your friends. <laughs> <laughs> no, they love me. I think. I think. Well, yeah, they can't tell you that they don't. They're afraid of you. <laughs> yeah, my, my friends, like, growing up, I would try to get them into it. Some of them would believe it, but a lot of them just kind of looked at me like I was stupid. Yeah. And they're just like, okay, Corey. Like, yeah, I'm sure that you're seeing things. I'm sure you're hearing things. Yeah. They just ignored it. They didn't really dig into it. I think I never knew this until now, only a couple years ago, but when I was a kid, me and my brother... For some reason, we did not sleep in our rooms because we were like, something weird is looking at us over there and we don't like the vibe. So we slept on the floor next to my parents' bed for like four or five years. But wow. I didn't I didn't think of it. I was just kind of like, mm, that room has a weird vibe. I don't like it. And I think one of my mom's friends came one time and she was like, this house has really bad vibes. And I was like, oh, that could be the reason. I don't know why. Did anything happen in the house? Like a Ouija board um, or a seance no. or anything? No. My mom was like strictly no Ouija boards because my dad did it one time and he was like the kitchen started vibrating did he do it in that house no it was uh, he lived in Manhattan so he did it there but like he's just like no Ouija boards no nothing because knowing he's my brother's more of a daring person so he's like let's go to the haunted place in Mm -hmm. the middle of the night and I'm like no yeah but like other than that no would your dad be willing to have something done to him to make sure that nothing is attached to him yeah, I yeah. think so. He's sort of open to it sometimes. He's like, I don't really believe in that stuff. And then something will happen to him. And he's like, okay, I was really wrong about that. I'm sorry. I will do anything. Mm-hmm. And then it's- But then a couple of weeks goes by and he's like, eh, no, yeah. I don't care. Yeah, it's yeah. fine. That's Elton. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's literally what you do. Just forget about it. Well, uh, one last question. Yeah. You could get rich instantly. Yeah. And you have to practice witchcraft and abandon everything. And your parents probably disown you. Okay. Would you do it? No. $1 million. No. 10 million. No. $100 million. No. One no. billion dollars. Nothing. You could buy them a new soul with that much money. <laughs> no. 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 You're a better person than I am. I would have done it for a hundred. <laughs> you want a hundred bucks? Yeah, just a hundred bucks, bucks. <laughs> dude. Gas is expensive and that motorhome is eating fuel. <laughs> yeah. I'll take the hundred. That's right about now. 12 miles. Yeah, there. exactly. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We literally okay. get one mile per 50 cents right now. We're doing um, great. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you for, yeah. for sharing your story, Mary. Thank you. Seriously. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. It's an honor. 
Can you do the face though? Can you do the face? I'll do it to you guys. Okay. Okay. All right. Just. I'll just do it. Okay. Oh, oh my God! It's so good. <laughs> Why? How did you do that? Why would you not do that? <laughs> it's so creepy. I don't that know how good. you have any friends. No, I really was, don't. That was really. That good. That is amazing. Thank you so much. Yeah. Give it up, y'all. Thank you. You have wow. your story. Yes, I do. <laughs> that was a really good face. It's, it was. That's really good. I would hate to see that in my closet ever. You know, it's so funny. We were gonna do the teacher thing, and I forgot I found these like dirty abandoned glasses, and I never put them on. Just you, put just put them on now. You want to read read them? Read with them. You. Th oh God. They're they're clean enough. I don't know. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> okay, should I actually wear these? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Okay. All right. All right. Nothing too fantastical. Fantastical. Wow. Wow. Are we about to enter into a fairy tale? <laughs> wow. That's a cool word. It ends with happy ever after. No, it doesn't. Okay. Oh, it doesn't. No. But when I was about eight or nine, my childhood cat died. The night after, I felt her jump up and walk on my bed like she would always do and saw the indent in the mattress sheets. Maybe two weeks later, I was reading in the living room when the lamp beside me turn dim. For context, this was one of those lamps where you could touch the side to turn it off and on, but there was a dim setting as well. You can't go straight from off to on. It always passed the dim setting. This cat was known in the family for rubbing up against this lamp and making it cycle through the settings. At first, I thought it may be a short or the bulb dying, but then I got the feeling it might really be my cat from beyond the grave. So I started talking to it. And when I asked for the lamp to go to various settings, on, dim, off, it would do as I said when asked. It went on for about three minutes until my mom entered the room and it never happened again. I don't even believe the bulb burnt out until months later and the lamp worked perfectly for the rest of my childhood in that home. Wow. That's interesting. That's kind of like the, like the animal spirits theory. Like I, we always talk to people and they're like, do you think that your pets still stay around? I'm, I'm taking these glasses off. <laughs> <laughs> no, we always talk about, do you think that your pets still stay with you after they pass? And I think that they do. I think it'd be great if they did. Yeah. Can I, I, point, can I point out though, one, one second, you started reading that like Ryan from Buzzfeed. Or from, from Ghost Files. What what was that last line you said? You're like, and the lamp worked perfectly. The red, like you literally read it exactly the way he does his voice. Over. Really? I don't know. If that's just like the ghost story voice. Is it? It was the glasses. It was. Uh, does he wear glasses? No. Oh. Okay. You that's interesting though. That's I've I've always you know I've believed that they do. That when your when your pets pass away, they still stay with you, and I like to believe that. Except and for like, dogs. What? Except for dogs, because all dogs go, go to, to heaven. heaven. Yeah. yeah. So, wait, what about cats? Oh, they're evil, dude. <laughs> cats are not evil. Okay, you can you can come on stage. I want I, I want to talk more about this. I have some theories. Lauren, is Lauren here? Oh, Get hey. up here, Lauren. What's up? Give it up for Lauren, y'all. For the record, uh, we know each other. We spent uh, eight days in Mexico together. <laughs> it was not a romantic thing. It was a travel with TFIL trip. Mm -hmm. Although we, we was... did both vomit off the side of a boat, though. Oh, so. we did share that moment yeah. together. How romantic. <laughs> so it was a romantic <laughs> thing. <laughs> we went to go see whale sharks and instead just vomited for eight straight hours. Aww. Yeah, pretty much. But, um, well, good to see you again. See you. Wait, one, do you like cats? I do. Okay. This was my childhood pet. She had been, like, with me since I was born, so... When she passed away, it was a big deal. Her name was Lightning. She had a sister named Thunder. Oh, Aww. Thunder. Is it, do you find that in interesting? Was it named Lightning because it was always playing with the lamp or that was just coincidental? It, that was a coincidence. So they were named Thunder and Lightning because they were both all black cats, except for Lightning had a little white patch. Mm. And it was funny because their personalities were also, also Thunder and Lightning because like Lightning you'd see first, she'd become like, hey, I'm here, pet me. Thunder would like rumble in and be like, 
Okay, I'm out. Bye. <laughs> what, was Thunder an overweight cat? Actually, the opposite. Thun Lightning was the overweight one. Okay, because my dog's name is Thunder and he is obese. <laughs> <laughs> the the yeah. dude lived up to his, he thunders his way into any room. <laughs> it's awful. Yeah, he, he, is a, he is a big boy. Mm -hmm. He is a fat husky, but I yeah. love him so much. He is. He is. He's a good boy. He would be the worst dog to haunt me though. <laughs> <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> That's all you hear. That's all he does. When he jumps on the bed, it breaks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you constantly keep buying new beds. Oh, no. <sighs> <laughs> okay, so back to the story. Yeah. So this happened the day after? It was maybe, yeah, it was either a day or a few days after that she had passed. And she, she had to be put down. Mm. So, because she had issues, like, basically, it was either hey, you're going to hurt your hip and be in pain for the rest of your life or we, you know, send you up in the sky. Yeah. But it was every night because she was kind of more my cat than Thunder was. She would sleep on my bed, be like, all right, curl up in you. Like, hey, going to stay with you for the night. Yeah. And so the, again, I can't remember if it was the night she passed or it was a few nights after. I felt like a cat jump up. I thought it was Thunder because Thunder was still alive. And I'm like, wake up. And I'm like, oh, that's weird. Thunder doesn't normally come in my room. She kind of keeps to herself. And I'm like, all right, there's, I'm awake. There's nothing here. She it doesn't look like she went down on the floor or anything. All right, whatever. Um, and I look and I'm like, nope, there is definitely a paw print. Like, cause it's like when cats come up on the bed can, and like the way my comforter was, it was like a really squishy soft one. Cause oh. I was in Ohio at this point. It was really cold. Mm. <laughs> and I was like, okay, that's no, that's a paw print. I know what, I know what it looks like when a cat jumps on my bed. I was like, where's thunder she's she's gotta be in here and i'm like my door's closed she couldn't have gotten in and closed it herself yeah <laughs> so i'm like okay and then it kind of like i went back to sleep i'm like whatever okay that was just kind of weird and then i had the feeling like there was a cat laying next to me mm. and i was like what the and then my brain was like okay it's fine maybe i'm just remembering her she passed really recently maybe it's this grief whatever then the light thing starts happening which this cat uh, ironically named lightning um, so the, yeah, the way the lamp worked in our house is like touch lamp. So like you had to tap it and it was like kind of finicky sometimes. Cause you'd be like, Oh, I want it on the light setting or the dim setting. And actually no one was in my house. So my mom walking in was, she heard them coming home from like a dinner or something. And so I'm sitting at home. I was probably reading a school book like that I had to do for homework and just like the light goes dim. I'm like, okay, that's weird. Turn it like go, go to off and then have to turn it back on. And like probably nothing happened for another minute. And then it went to dim again. I was like, okay. And then touch it for a minute and then went off. Like, oh, maybe the, the wire shorted or something like that. Unplug the lamp, plug it back in. This keeps, keeps happening. It's like, okay, maybe the bulb's burning out, but like it yeah. was going to the dim setting and then straight back to bright. It wasn't like flickering. So like, that's a little weird. And I just got the feeling to be like, you know, you had the cat on your bed ghost thing maybe like i was just learning like ghost hunters and ghost adventures mm -hmm. and getting into watching that stuff yeah i was like lightning i'm trying to read can you not and it went back to bright like immediately wow okay but it cycled up through the dim setting so it was like it was off and then like dim to light i was like okay you want to do that again and then when she went dim to dark and it was like it was a good pause of like the cat going up rubbing circling around like that kind of pacing and i was just like are you lightning are you, are you messing with and it was like it happened for a few minutes and then my mom came in and it never happened again and that lamp never did it ever again bulb was totally fine didn't ever have i was like moms do we replace the bulb no it's just, whatever it's probably new as of like six months ago, or however long ago it was like shouldn't have shorted shouldn't have anything that lamp is still in my family house and it's still We've changed the bulb since, but there's like same wire never happened. Wow. wow. You think it's very cat-like that the cat finally decided to listen to you after it had passed? Like it spent its entire life just not caring about you. Oh, and yeah. then afterwards it was like, okay, I'll give you one minute yeah. of actually caring. Well, it's because I think it was also, my cat would also like, it, when you're reading a book and it's like, hey, I'm going to sit right on the page mm. as you're reading. I know you're trying to finish this for homework and you really want to go to bed, uh, but no. Uh, and so it's just like, oh, yeah, this this cat behavior i'm trying to finish my homework and you're like turning off the light so i can't read right now do you think lightning was doing that to show you that they're okay 
before the final goodbye, before, you know, going to heaven or anywhere else. I, I wouldn't be surprised by that because she was like, not that I needed an emotional support animal or at eight, nor did I know what that was, but like she was my cat. Like mm-hmm. having yeah, to she loved be you. the one yeah. to be like, hey, I'm putting you down, but for good reason. I was messed up by that. Like I was mentally, like the week in preparation was just like, whew. <laughs> like definitely probably the worst grief I had had at that point. And I'd had family members die. Like my grandpa had passed away. My uncle had passed away. And like this hit me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But so maybe, maybe the, I would like to think it was her coming back and being like, oh, it's okay. Yeah. Cause I mean, your pets love you, you know, yeah. like the bond that you get like with your pets is honestly incredible i feel like that's what it was i feel like it was her just being like hey it's okay i'm still here Mm -hmm. but it never happened again since that no nothing weird no jumping on the bed no none of that so i actually i switched i the the, one of the other things i'm like i wonder if this played into it i had just bought a new bed that was a loft bed like the the time this happened my bed was like on the floor like a standard bed maybe like i think it might have been around my birthday too uh my parents were like, hey, we'll get you a loft bed and redid my entire room. So it was like, maybe she couldn't physically, metaphysically. Uh, <laughs> uh, I used the word fantastical in that. I had to, I can throw some SAT words in there. <laughs> um, couldn't jump up on the bed and maybe that's why I never had that happen again. Also, we did like a few years later get new cats. So it's like, maybe chase them out. Not to put you on the spot, but could you retell that same story, but with nothing but SAT words? Oh, probably. Could you? Absolutely. Give me that story in one minute. Nothing but SAT words. Oh. Bring it to life. <laughs> On the spot, Jesus. Mm-hmm. Inside the domestic dwelling in which I lived in the moderate childhood youth of my years. <laughs> keep going. Keep yeah. going. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. This is nice. Um, there was a certain paranormal uh, anomaly that uh, reacquainted upon my person uh, of the Flea Domesticus. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> Keep going. Whether it was uh, upon their two, I feel like I'm going more Victorian Commit. than I am. SAT it's numbers. okay. We're it's enjoying okay. it. Keep yeah, going. This is cool. Remember, the students are watching. Oh, yes, this is where you're going to get the quiz words. It's going to be defining all of these words. <laughs> upon the comforter, which uh, donned my uh, sleeping domicile. <laughs> domicile okay i don't know what that means <laughs> i got no idea that's an evil villain <laughs> did the feline create an imprint in the downy surface of the comforter wow <laughs> keep going <laughs> uh, talk about the lamp oh the lamp uh, yeah what fancy words do you have for lamp got her ha <laughs> The light curtain. Uh, the electronic uh, light source. Uh, 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 yeah, that's where I meant it. Okay. I'll, I'll take the take the L on the rest. Wow. <laughs> Yo, that was great. We'll though. give you like a 650 on that. <laughs> so I, I've actually, I've never talked about this before, but it kind of makes me want to put two and two together. I had my, my first dog passed away in 2016. I have his paw print tattooed. Uh, right here. He was like my best friend. It was the same thing. I had to be the choice to, to put him down. He was hit by a car. Um, and I had to be in the room and like, look at him as I, as I made that choice. Um, and I would always feel as though he slept in a very particular spot on my bed. I always had to sleep crooked because he wanted to sleep at the top part of the bed. And I always had to sleep in like a, you know, like a, a kind of a curved shape to accommodate him. And my other dog Circa would always sleep at the bottom of the bed. After he passed, Circa would never ever leave her spot. Like she would not dare. Anytime we'd get in the bed, she would never dare go anywhere near that spot. The same way you would never like dare step on someone, right? Like, and I would always feel him there. I'd always kind of like wake up and like feel like Sparta was still, and and for years and years, Circa never, ever, no matter what I did, I could, she loves food. She's absolutely driven by food. I couldn't give her anything in the world that would get her to go to that spot on the bed at night. It never happened. And it never did happen until I got Thunder, the obese dog (laughs) that eats all of the food. And ever since he came into into like her life and my life, now she'll actually sleep on that part of the bed near me. So it's kind of like a weird thing because I always felt like, I don't know, maybe she, as Circa, right, the dog saw 
something there, but it was so strange. Like she just always, and she was just like, I don't know. It was this weird, like, not like she missed her best friend, but as if like it, the best friend was still there. Mm. And I, I don't know. It was such a weird thing. It was never anything paranormal. I never like, other than like a little weird feeling, but I never like saw him or saw like, sort of paw prints or anything like that. I just kind of always felt like maybe he was there, but from the dog level of things, they like saw each other, mm. which is like a weird, a weird thing. I mean, and they always say animals can see spirits and stuff and more than we can see on a different plane. So Yo, Thunder is so dumb. He can barely even see a door. <laughs> <laughs> this, the amount of times this fat dog has walked into the glass door Aww. is don't all he, he did. <laughs> we try and feed him properly. He just finds things. He's just, I love him, but Oh God, if he became a ghost, it'd be the clumsiest dog ever. <laughs> We'd have to replace so many screen doors. That would be terrible. Yeah. He goes through them all. Hmm. You, I've talked with you. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you guys. Did you guys have anything you want to talk about real quick? No, I'm just. I'm just. Can I, can honestly I use the dowsing rods tonight? You want to use dowsing rods? Are you investigating tonight? this? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I didn't realize that. Oh, oh nice. yeah, me and Becky and you. Oh, I didn't realize all three. Oh, I didn't oh, realize yeah. all three of you. I thought it was just. <laughs> I thought it was just part. you. Okay. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. yeah, you can use dowsing. Yeah, we have three sets of dowsing rods too. We have oh. everything. Three of you, three sets of dowsing rods, or you each hold one and see they cross. You know what I mean? Okay, hopefully no vomiting this time when we see each other. <laughs> It'd be great if we can go through the night without having to vomit. That's fair. Okay. Well, well thank you for, thank you. for sharing the story. Yeah. Appreciate it. Give it, it up, y'all. Give it a round of applause. So typically, when we end our shows, we do a Q&A. <laughs> That's normally what we do. That's the, what these all are. These are all the questions that were submitted. But I feel like a big bulk of them have been submitted. Um, so this is the part where we go to the actual genuine uh, Q and A. So either I can pull them from here, which I could do, mm -hmm. or we could just straight up just ask if anyone has a question. Does anyone have a question that has not been answered yet? That is anything. Yes. What would your question be? Do I have to do the main thing? No, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but you have to speak like it's an SAT. Is there any destination that you prefer not to go to? Is there any destination that we prefer not to go to? I don't. I don't think mm. there's any place for me that I would not go to. I really can't think of a, of a certain location, even uh, Akihara Forest, Suicide Forest, like we're considering going back to, but this time with more of a informative approach to it, not just forests with a lot of tragedy, but actually work with someone within the Japanese mental health world to have them come talk to us about why this is so frequent and rampant in this culture, in this, in this city, and something along those lines. So even like the taboo locations I feel like I'm still okay trying to go to because I think now I understand how to make videos in a more appropriate beneficial manner um so I don't think there's any place I would never go to yeah do you have one no I mean as long as we have permission I'm down to go what if there's a skinwalker he already shook hands he already shook hands yeah, for a I week kinda, at skinwalker kinda... ranch Skinwalker. But Skinwalker Ranch has called it probably because there's a Skinwalker. Yeah, I kind of screwed myself on that yeah, one. Yeah, dude. <laughs> you could have screwed Annabelle. Anyway. <laughs> Callbacks. Yes. Is there any places that, like, that, you, that you went to and you didn't have as much experience that you like, want to like, that you look back and like, oh, I wish I knew what we had? That is a very good question. Yep. I, I would say one location that that parlayed perfectly into was Waverly Hills. The first time we went there, even though only a year and a half ago, we kind of knew what we were doing, kind of didn't, had some camera malfunctions, but this time at Waverly, man, we were like, we just were zoned in. Like we kind of understood what was happening. Mm -hmm. And it was like, we had three different teams in three different parts of Waverly Hills. And like every team was just like on point. And I think it's just cause we knew the place, we knew the history, we knew how to connect. And like, so yeah. I, I, what place would you want to go back to? Um, that we went to, oh, Conjuring House, I think has to be one. Conjuring we house, went there very, sure. very early. For that was sure. episode one of 25 Weeks of Haunted. Yeah. I think, or one of the first episodes. Yeah. I think Conjuring House would be one, um, especially now knowing a lot more uh, about it as well. Where would you want to go? That you had um, it's somewhere that you haven't been to. I've talked about this a little bit, but it would be the house I grew up in. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Just because, you know, all I knew back then was Ouija boards and setting up my iPod to get EVPs. That's all I did. Going back there now with what we know and the devices that we have, I would be able to know, you know, what I was talking to and seeing growing up. Uh, I will say, and I'm, I'm not even like, I truly meant this when the Warren Museum, like we finally got to go there. I was so grateful that they didn't say yes four years ago. 
It was one of the best things to ever happen because if they would have said yes four years ago, we would have had no idea in the slightest what we were doing. We'd have just shown up with like oh. a, a dowsing rods in 1K2 with no knowledge, no understanding, no respect, yeah. no encounters. We like, wouldn't be here today. <laughs> yeah, we would have died. Like we we, we, we would have died. died in the Warren Museum uh, yeah. had we gone there for. We would have went in there and you would have been like, so Annabelle, smash her pass. <laughs> <laughs> God. Uh, this is a kind of a cool one. What is left on your paranormal bucket list? That's a hard one. You can only do one more thing on your paranormal bucket list. Dude, we've been like everywhere. Not a, We've been a lot of places, but not everywhere. It doesn't have to be a place, though. Just one place in general? You just want to get picked up by your alien sugar daddy? Yeah, honestly, that would that, be, that's paranormal. Yeah, it is. I mean, I mean, I guess we could do this, but it, it would be kind of like going into outer space, you know, something like that. That's not Imagine paranormal. Inve- no, no, no. Imagine investigating in outer space. What? No, 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 no. Hear me out. Hear me. Hear me out. I'll hear you. I'm putting no, my mic hear me out. Right. Okay. So up. No, no, no. Just has anyone ever like brought ghost tools into a rocket? Right. And then when you go into space, you set them all up. Right. And then because the rocket's constantly moving, it's going to new areas. Right. Think about it. What if what if devices are going off? What if the ovulus is like alien Zorg bor? And it's like, oh, I'm talking to the Zorg bores right now. How much were my videos to make earlier? <laughs> Five thousand. I don't know. I, I, I think that would be cool. But, dude, I can't think of anywhere here. You know, you'll literally be like probably five years away from me, able to like recreationally go to space. If you start saving now, you could definitely do that in like five years from now. Could we ghost hunt in space? <laughs> you are not taking me serious at all. Dude, I bet Linda would do it with me. Linda's with me on this. Sure, dude. Do it, Linda. That's, really? Yeah. Does anyone think this is a, a, a an idea that should be fulfilled? Think of all the energy. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> think of the energy in space, dog. Just think about it. Look, I'm down to go to space with you. And if you want to bring the ghost tools for sure. Yeah. But I'll probably just bring like a camera. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, just, and some headphones and enjoy the ride. Okay. <laughs> what, what if you set up like a REM pod on the moon and like, you know. It would float away, No, but you, you could nail it oh, down. Oh, so now we're just doing carpentry on the moon? <laughs> Dude, I don't know. I think that I... I I think that a lot of souls and spirits and stuff like that can fly through space. So it's just a... I'm curious about it. Okay. Yeah. The mathematical odds of catching a spirit traveling through the ever-expanding universe, otherwise known as space, with a single little antenna uh-huh. is so astronomically not possible. But what if the REM pod went off? It's space, dude. I don't know. I just- Whatever. If you can investigate a fucking haunted 7-Eleven, you can investigate the moon, Okay. <laughs> All right, that's my opinion on that. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, left on Paranormal Bucket List, Skinwalker Ranch is for sure there. Um, one place I'd love to go to would be Paviglia Island in uh, Italy, uh, Black Plague Island, basically. I think it'd be really cool to go there. People have gone there without permission. Um, I have dabbled into looking at the proper paperwork to actually go there with permission. Or Imagine the Estes method on the moon. Carry on. No, that's it. That was it. <laughs> like, you know how we get like frequencies? Like, didn't they just get like a frequency of like a heartbeat or something? They got like a radio wave of a heartbeat coming in. They got a radio wave that resembles the frequency of a heartbeat. Yes, through the James Webb telescope. So imagine doing the or, Estes sorry, method up there. Like, what if you're like listening and like you're not going to get. You wouldn't be able to hear each other. We could have walkie talkies in our suits. <laughs> You know? <laughs> Last question. <laughs> what are your favorite bands? I got a lot of favorite bands. I'd have to say, like, favorite artists. Um, definitely, like, I love Suicide Boys. Uh, I love Cemetery. I'm a huge Cemetery fan right now. We're catching a theme. <laughs> <laughs> uh, obviously, Uzi. I love Uzi. Uh, I love Young Thug. And if I had to say one more, like my favorite, like producer, maybe like Keswick or Proto Hype. I bet no one knows almost anyone that I just talked about. 
I know what a cemetery is. <laughs> That's pretty much it, though. Yeah, no, cemetery is a new artist. He's fire. Got it. I don't think anyone would know the bands I listen to either. I'm more in the uh, the hardcore uh, world, like Comeback Kid, H2O, Four Years Strong, uh, those kind of bands, like the pop punk, like kind of more on the edgier side of like the Warped Tour stuff. Okay, and Shania Twain. It's sh- Okay, thanks. We're just going to grab water and we're going to go take pictures with everyone. See you in a second. Thank you.